Hey, what's good, everybody, man? I appreciate you all joining us for another episode of Fatherhood Is Dope, the podcast. I'm your guy, your host, Aaron McGee. And, man, can I just say that I'm elated to have my guest joining us, joining me today, man. It's my guy, Glenn Henry, also known as Belief. Yeah. What's good, man? I'm good, bro. I'm yeah. chilling, man. Things are amazing. I'm so glad to be here with you, and I'm glad that you... You know, continue to make this podcast and yeah. what you're doing, bro. You, you striving forward, bro. See, I can't, I can't take them already. See, I already know. If you don't know, then because when you know what you're looking at, you know how to interpret it. Because this is a guy that, in, in all that you do, man. Let me get over here to you. I'm talking to them. Let me get yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah, in, in, in all that you do, man, I real, I recognize that you always show up in this posture of encouragement, like just hands down. You know, we we're here at the Dad Two Summit. Uh, you got Casey in the background. Casey, Casey kicked it all off. Um, yo, if you're listening right now, then check the video out uh, on YouTube, of course. Uh, but we're here at the Dad Summit, Dad Two Summit in D.C. right now. And for me, this is where um, even this idea, or at least the motion of podcasting, started. And I want to make sure I'm not getting ahead of myself, but the guy Casey, who was just in the background, and you played a huge role in that two, three years ago uh, when I met you. When I met you all um, in New, in New Orleans, Orleans. Yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's all love. Okay, let me get to it for the people who don't know, man. So belief is, in my in my opinion, one of the juggernauts in this fatherhood movement. In fact, when he showed up to the to the dad summit today, <laughs> I was eating breakfast. They was like, "Yo, is that belief? Who is this guy? Everybody's like looking for him. They shaking up with him." And I think what's so what's so unique and why you get that type of that type of vibe and that type of energy is because people really truly believe that you're showing up in an authentic way that adds value and that contributes to the fatherhood movement so i kind of want you to just dive in with your background yeah the backstory on how you even arrived to this place yeah i think we're, we're good right here okay yeah this is uh, actually a spot by the elevators okay which is like it's a perfect spot because you actually have I mean, you have the acoustics here which are something yeah, but I like the light in here. So when yeah. you don't have a okay. when you don't have a set, then you gotta you gotta be mindful of, of these these pigments in the skin. Yeah. So it makes us look better right yeah, here. You in my light, right? Yeah. Now. <laughs> Doug, you're stepping in my light, Doug. Well, at least I'm not getting the shine. <laughs> hey, but guess what, Doug? I'm recording video too. Are you? Yep, right there. Okay. So that's Doug. Doug, just say hi. This is Doug, one of the co-founders of the Dad Two Summit. Hello, everyone. Yes. All right. Uh, so yeah, we're uh, we're here at the Dad Two Summit, man. Doug, you wanna what, what you got for us? I'm just sitting here. I got a belief is dope on. sandwich right here. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There and it is. I don't want to leave. Yeah. 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 And if, if you if you hear that voice, you know he has a voice that's made for podcasts, yes. radio, and everything in for between. Sure. As I think the three of us should take it on tour. Hey, say, say less. My, my. You set it up. We'll get <laughs> Kenneth Kellogg I'm, to come and do it and round us out oh, on the bottom, man. and uh, oh, man. we will not be stoppable. Yeah, oh, man. man. It's like a little baritone sandwich. Going going on man yeah. it's awesome yeah if anybody that's can do it it's you too <laughs> baritone <laughs> sandwich yeah that's that that's brandable yeah yes. that's sweet anyway you guys are great um i'm it's, it's saturday afternoon yeah we're just we're cruising to the end yeah. and um, i'm so glad you guys are both here yeah. likewise too, um and you are a fashion model to be stop it man hey, have hey, you hey, seen hey. this guy no no this stop is the it. guy <laughs> Stop Slender it. to tall with Stop the hats. It. I see it. how you be doing it, son. Stop Always it. clean shade. All Stop this it. handsomeness wasted on a podcast. <laughs> yes. See, that's why I got video exactly. too. <laughs> see? Amen, amen. The man is not a dummy. That's funny. Yes, but that's this man funny. fills out a dad too shirt, and I'm grateful I appreciate for that. It. Yes, so I appreciate it. Watch, he'll, he'll be on, on our Instagram Sweet. rocking that shirt. I'll take that. And he'll be rocking that cap. Yep, yeah. Always. Oh, thanks, thank everyone. Right, for brother. sure, for sure. Yeah, so uh, just to, you know, start it up. Yeah, uh, for me... It's always about, it's always about adding value. Yeah. Every single room you step in, it should be better because you step in the room. Yeah. Um, and every single time you post anything online, it should make the world better. Yeah. Or at least allow people to reflect on something that they have may forgotten about or not appreciated something that, uh, you know, that they used to appreciate, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so <clears throat> starting with my journey, I, you know, I started out, uh, in 2000, I started out doing music. I was an MC, you yeah. know, sitting in the Christian space, Christian hip hop, doing very well, you know, whatever. But um, I feel like there was a human aspect missing where everything was so much about competitive and being the best and all this stuff. Um, it really didn't support, you know, who I was as a person, which is actually very, you know, funny, kind of calm guy, mm -hmm. you know. And so fatherhood kind of, 
allowed me to kind of show the best part of myself. And I just was kind of obsessed with making cinematic and, and interesting vlogs, not just like, hey guys, we're going to Walmart, mm -hmm. but like, man, did I ruin my relationship with my son because I, I yelled at him? Like, that's a real conversation and a question. And to capture that moment where it was authentic is, is so important. And so I think so, so much mystery in parenting because our parents didn't have time to apologize. Mm -hmm. Didn't have time to explain why they were doing what they were doing. It's just yeah. do this because I said so. We didn't yeah. want to got time for all that. Yeah. Um, but now we're in a place where people actually need to know the why behind what you do. Okay. And so the why behind what I do is, is to add a lot of value to everyone else. Man, so all of that was so loaded. I'm going to take us a step back, but I do want to highlight something that you said. You said you were obsessed with making uh, creative content. Yeah. And as you said that, it's, it's so evident as I just, as I track with you, I'm like, he is getting on my last nerve. I know, bro. Every time yeah. you take it up a notch, and quite frankly, I think that you master simplicity in so many ways yeah. even though what you do there's a lot of details there are some intricacies and in, in the in the content that you create but then there's this other simplistic aesthetic that I think you just master so I'm take a step back yeah because let's I'm, let's just assume that somebody's listening to this they don't know you yeah so um What's the setup, kids, wife? I know all of this, but I'm I'm brand new, man. Yeah, so my wife and I have been married nine years. Yvette? Yvette, yep. Yvette. Yeah, married nine years. We have a seven-year-old. Um, we have a five-year-old. We have a two, almost three-year-old, and an eight-month-old. Uh, three boys, uh, the girl seconds to last. Um, that's five, if you... Yeah, that's no, it's four. It's that's four. four. Three boys, and, and the, the girl second, second to, to last. last. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we... You know, we live in California, um, and I'm just, I, you know, like you said, I'm obsessed, right? Yeah. Um, I realize that I'm not just an MC, mm -hmm. right? I'm not just a YouTube vlogger. Yeah. Like, I am a storyteller. Yeah. And so I tell stories, whether it be through rhyme, mm -hmm. whether it be through video, mm -hmm. whether it be for a voiceover mm -hmm. or speaking or doing leading the panel, whatever mm -hmm. I'm doing, mm -hmm. I'm telling stories. And so the important part is to like know who I am, you yeah. know? And so when you talk about bringing it up a notch, that is literally like, that means so much to me that you notice that because mm -hmm. every single video, I'm like, okay, how much did we invest in this last video? How can we at least add a dollar to that? Mm -hmm. Like, what can we do to make this $1 better? Yeah. Uh, what can we do to make this one, you know, shot better? And hanging out with people who are obsessed with their art. Mm -hmm. Um, and so now I actually have employees and people who work with me yeah. on my content to make it as better, as good as it is. You know? Yeah, man, it's, it's so hard. It's challenging to have this conversation with you because traditionally I'm talking to men about fatherhood. And, you know, sometimes that can be really streamlined. But I think what you what you contribute and how you show up in your space is so dynamic that I'm really trying to pace myself like, okay, which way you want to go? Because you, you no, got- let me, you, let me tell you this, you, you can do this again. Say less. Okay, so you can hit me up and we can do it all, all online. Say and less. We can ask more questions and stuff say like less. that, so yeah. Okay, okay, I love that. Well, you know, but one thing that really sticks out to me that um, as a content creator in this fatherhood space, um, the question I have is like, man, how, how authentic do you do you have to be or are you as you are creating content and living real life at the same time? Because I'll be honest, I watch your stuff and man, you capture, you capture life. And I'm generally watching like, I'm sick of him. Why does, but why does it still feel real? Yeah. Because it's so easy to stage. Mm -hmm. Like that whole, you all had the X3, the BMW, was it the X3 or X5? Yeah. That whole road trip situation, all of that felt real. Yeah. And I'm like, but but how? You captured it all. Yeah. What's 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 the balance or, or how how do you manage that balance of being authentic but still, you know, display, displaying your family for us to learn lessons from? Yeah, man, it's 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 hard because you know, I you know, work life balance is kind of a myth right now for me. Yeah. It's like not real. Um, you know, it, it just is like my wife really has to be on board and understand like this is what I do, you know? And she has to be okay that, babe, I might pull out the camera at any moment. Mm -hmm. 
and you know you may have a breast out your breast <laughs> you know what i'm saying you may not look like you want to look you yeah, know what i'm saying but yeah. we are capturing real life the funky breath the eye crust mm-hmm. ashy like mm-hmm. we're, ca- we're capturing all of that mm-hmm. um i think that i don't really have a lot of rules when it comes to like what i'm filming and what i'm not filming i film everything and i'm not always filming but i i won't not film because of whatever if something's yeah. happened i'll pull the camera out yeah um and i think what happens is we are so used to people displaying what we want, what they want us to see mm-hmm. that we aren't, we haven't been trained to see anything real. Mm-hmm. So you could tell the difference because the camera's always rolling. Yeah. Anything we've ever watched before was all staged. Yeah. The Cosby show was staged. Yeah. Fresh Prince was staged. These, you know, uh, my wife and kids, like these were people writing for children. Mm-hmm. So when you're listening, you're watching my show, and my son goes, I'm so irritated. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that was a real response. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? But <laughs> he was really that. I couldn't write that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I think the dialogue, the dialogue is important. You know, like making sure you're hearing what everyone's saying. But then you're also, what you're really getting is a, is a thought into my, my brain space. Because a lot of my stuff is VO, it's voiceover. Yeah, yeah. So I shoot something and I'm ex- and explaining how I'm feeling about it. And so the reason why it feels so real is because you can relate to it because yeah. you're probably feeling the same way yeah. during those times. The only difference between me is, be, is that I'm so emotional, I have a very high emotional IQ, so I can also explain things that even don't favor me well. Yeah, so good. you know what I'm saying? So like things that make me look bad, I'm yeah. able to explain it. I'm able to explain it in a way yeah. that, um, you know what I'm saying? Like still like, expl- like you know, shows the truth about where I'm at, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm feeling this. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling this. So um, as I'm doing this, I'm really thinking that that this this conversation really is for dads like me that's in the space. Because it's, it's a twofold. Sometimes it's a this is a how-to conversation. It can be that. But I want to leverage kind of like how... Because Yvette is in, she's in the trenches with you all. Yeah. With you, with you on this entire process. I mean, you all do the podcast together. She's in a great deal of everything that I've seen. Um, and just to piggyback off uh, one of one of the things that really stick out to me and how I even how you came into my space is because your wife posted a video that my wife saw that resonated and spoke directly into a situation that we were dealing with that I was not budging on. And I think I told you this the first time that I met you in New Orleans, and it was about, do we get our daughter's ears pierced or not? Yeah. And I watched the video on YouTube, and I was like, man, this is so stinking good. I'm, I'm sick of them. <laughs> and, 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 and I was not budging. So Therese wanted to get Journey's ears pierced, and I, I just did not understand mm-hmm. why this was even relevant. Like, I'm like, she's like six months. She won't even know. Yeah, yeah. Wait till she's 18. Like, whatever, you know. And I watched that video that she sent me, like she generally does. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised you watched it, because usually when my wife sends me links, I'm like, I'm not watching this. You're not finna. I normally. Right. <clears throat> <laughs> um, I watch them when I can. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I had to be careful because Therese, she don't listen to all my podcasts. She always gives me the, the, the pat on the back, but she's actually a fan of you and your family. Oh. So I know she want want to hear what we were talking about. But man, you said something that was so profound in that in that vlog, that the the video, and it was something to the degree. And I've been using this literally since like 2018, mm-hmm. and it was something to the degree of um, being in agreement versus being in alignment. Yeah. And that resonated with me as a father and particularly as a husband, too, as we are trying to work to make decisions. Um, so I'm interested to see, like, how how do you still employ that type of principle in everything that you're doing, knowing that you and your wife, you're, you're living your lives out loud. You all are creating content that literally you mentioned Fresh Prince, the Cosby's my wife and kids, mm-hmm. but you all are creating content that's literally shaping families, even like mine. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that, that quote comes from my pastor, who's uh, Pat Lynch, and who's the, you know, the boys, uh, well, all my kids' godfather, mm-hmm. and one of my closest friends. Um, and being in agreement versus alignment is just like, you know, we don't have to agree on this one thing, but we are aligned to the same vision. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I, and it's more also like, I don't understand this. 
And because I don't understand it, that doesn't mean that she's wrong. That just means I don't really have the capacity to understand it. Um, and sometimes as fathers, we want to redo and change everything that we've seen our parents fail at or we've seen parents mess up or whatever. And we have this control thing. Um, but that's actually a loss for us. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, our wives want the same thing. They have their own desires and, and stuff too. So I feel like we have to kind of let go of a lot of the... Um, the control and hard stance on certain issues if we're moving in the same direction. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so we're moving forward. You know, my issue was that I didn't, I, you know, I didn't understand why we were going to put our daughter through that, that pain just for vanity. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just thought it was, it was irritating me. You know what I'm saying? And Yvette was saying, you, you know, our daughter, like, sometimes it's hard to tell if she's a boy or girl. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, when our son he had super long hair, people mm -hmm. would mistake him for a girl. Mm -hmm. And so her having earrings, you know, with, you know, she's out with her daughter, that's, it's just less conversation she has yeah, to have, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's a thing, you know what yeah. I mean? Like this is a thing in black, you yeah. know, black culture. And so. Can, can I say this real yeah, quick? Yeah, sure. I don't know if you still see this, but literally I've always thought that your daughter and my daughter look Looked alike. Look alike, yeah, yeah. And I could not, I'm, what in the world, when I even saw your daughter in person in real life, I'm like, she looks like my daughter yeah. and we had the same challenge of asking or you know a comment to be made oh he's so he's so cute yeah like and and sometimes you know you don't want to keep having it he was like i am a boy thank you yeah. no sometimes it's just thank you yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and and now and, and as parents you know had to be cognizant whether it's the earrings whether it's the color pink or the mm -hmm. color purple etc but so i i get that i get that perspective i just wanted to chime in right yeah there. for sure and so you know, it's important, like, to, to, to not major in the minors, you know what yeah, I mean? So, like, whether, whether if she has earrings or not, like, it's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. Like, some things just aren't that big of a deal, but because it's your first child, it's your first time having a daughter, like, mm -hmm. you're like, man, this is a big deal for me. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be a part, I don't want this, I don't agree with this. And it's just not the hill you really want to die on, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah, man. But agreement versus, al versus alignment is super important for anybody doing business together, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because... You know, I could give my wife like, okay, fine, you 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 lead this, and people like are really reluctant. You let your wife lead, mm -hmm. and that you you ain't no man. Mm -hmm. Like, this is my relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, I gotta sleep with mm -hmm. next to her. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I gotta. This is my relationship, so I want her to lead in this way. Go ahead and lead. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And if it doesn't go the way, then next time maybe she'll trust me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's okay. You know when I don't like you the most? When? It's when you put out music. Oh man, yeah. Because it's so good. I'm like, Lord, <laughs> you could have dispersed this talent equally. Yeah. What is up with this? Yeah. Man, can you just take me through that, that creative process for you? And I think you do such a phenomenal job of ca characterizing fatherhood lyrically. Yeah. So, I mean, what's that process like? Man, you know, I honestly believe it's unfair. I feel like that's my... Um, people talk about, okay, you're going to start something, yeah. right? All right, you're going to start it. So... I want to invest in you. What's mm -hmm. your unfair advantage? What do you have over everybody else? That's good. And so I think about it like, okay, what's my unfair advantage? I can rhyme. I can make a song about anything. And you do. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not hard. It doesn't take me a long time. And I'm kind of like, well, it's kind of knocking. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and I put it out. But the, the super unfair advantage is the network of producers I've you know, amassed over the years. It's just like, yo, I got this new beat. I got this. Or the cost it is to mix my records. It only mm -hmm. cost me like a hundred bucks. You know what I mean? Um, the fact that, you know, I live in California and I can go outside and shoot a video anywhere. Yeah. Or, you know, um, my, my children are so likable. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it has a lot to do with, with it. But when I talked about, you know, being a storyteller, right? I'm a storyteller. Not to mention the book. I'm not even mentioning the yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, right the now. book, right? So it's all stories, right? So I'm a storyteller, so I get inspiration from what I see. Yeah. So if I wanted to write a, uh, 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 <clears throat> a song about walking around DC, like yeah. I could write a song about that, but I would only, I would have to look around and see what I'm looking at. Yeah. What does it feel like when, you, when, when your souls touch the pavement? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I could write a song about your soul touching the pavement and how you want to touch other people's souls to pave, you know what I'm saying? Like whatever, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, but it all starts from the visual. So I'm looking at video and I'm watching my son's interact and I'm realizing I missed this moment. You know what I'm saying? And I can start out and it just, I don't, I don't even know how to explain it. I can't explain it to you because it's like, it's such a mental like, um, like gauge for me. Like yeah. it's like gears clicking mentally. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, okay, this is what the song is about. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, man, it's really unfair advantage. I can't really it say is. anything I'm about it. I'm sick of it. Yeah, man. I, I found myself sitting down writing like some yeah. garbage. Yeah. I said, you know, so I'm, I'm just going to keep singing in the but car. It, the thing is, it's not about so much, you know, because like, you know, I make really great music, but not a lot of people hear it. Yeah. You know, like, I think probably like 5% of my audience listens to my music. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I really do think I, I, I'm, I'm exceptional in that, mm-hmm. exceptional in that way. But people, it's hard to trust them. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if people don't trust you with music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and people are like, man, I like you so much. I don't want to listen to your music and, and not you, like you. Yo, that and can you happen. disappoint me. Yeah. Because if, like, I already like you as a person. Yeah. And I like you as a, but yeah. I don't want. Uh, yeah, that I don't can want happen. You, you, I don't want you. I don't want you in my playlist. So an artist comes to mind who I was. I love his music. Started following him on Instagram. I don't like your real life. Yeah, man. I said, you know something? Unfollow. I'm going to appreciate this on my yeah, playlist. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to appreciate this. Without um, trying to... Well, I, w- I wanted to say this real quick, man. You, you're one of the guys that, uh, that I'm able to follow in a way that is authentic, yet challenging all at the same time. Yeah, I understand Cause, that. I mean, because you, you said something um, on the panel. You were saying, like, sometimes you see people and they can be discouraging because of what they're doing. But somehow, yeah. I think uh, for you, I think the reason that you even get the type of love that you get when you show up in a room, because somehow, even in your work, I think you're able to put your heart out there in a way. You're not saying, hey, this is my heart, but I like to generally say what comes from the heart goes to the heart. Mm-hmm. And you all, your family included, you're able to do this work in such an authentic way that it's really disarming. When at the end of the mm-hmm. day, you really out here beasting, and it's like, it's like the Kobe effect or something. Yeah. It's like, man, yo, he's one of the coldest. Yeah. <laughs> but you know something? Yeah. Because other, it's it's easy to tune out a lot of people. So I just I just wanted to commend you for that. Yeah, I think I think too, man. It's like I understand the competitiveness of what we do, mm-hmm. and I understand that, you know, it just you just want to be the best. You yeah, know, beyond competitiveness, just the the level of. I say envy too. That could mm-hmm. be perceived because you you can't compete with something that if you're not even on the same level. But you can you can hate from a distance and hate from a far end up close too. But I think that that how you show up, I think it even disarms like people that have the potential to be like, man, he ain't really doing nothing. Yeah, because I mean, like, I agree with you. Yeah. Like, I don't think I'm doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you gotta understand. That's a good. Like, that's a good posture. Like. I don't like when I step into a room. I'm mm-hmm. always like, "How can I add value to you?" Yeah. I don't care about like all that other stuff I'm doing. It has such a long lasting effect. It doesn't matter what you think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. How yeah. can I help you? Like, yeah. what do you need? Yeah. Take my number. Yeah. Well, you want to know how much I'm getting paid? Yeah. This is how much I'm getting paid, yeah. so you don't under undercut yeah. yourself. First conversation we had, you and your wife sat down at the little mixer in New Orleans and literally laid out. Man, I remember the whole conversation. Yeah. Y'all laid out. Literally, like from Patreon piece, a YouTube piece. Yeah, I was like, "Yo, they out here killing it!" And you all came with such th- this this openness, this transparency that because I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't even know that it can be done on this level. Yeah, and literally, you all there there you all were a respecter of person. Mm-hmm. It was like everybody at the table. There was a level of in, in inclusion and equity that was going around, man, and it. Not that I had my guards up, but any guards that I did have up, it really disarmed me. Like, yo, you know something? I think I can do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's the whole point. It's like, like let like fathers being scared to do something because like that doesn't help the movement. Yeah, that doesn't help the people. Like it doesn't help children. Yeah, you know. Um, and and man, I I, I totally understand you. Like I wrestle with that too. Like with pride. Like. Um, Daddy Chronicles or Chronicles of Dad is mm-hmm. here. Like I've been following that dude for a minute. Yeah. Like, we just met today. Yeah. But I was like, damn man, this dude is killing it. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's not about like, you know, sometimes I shoot myself in the foot by working too hard to put out a piece of content. Mm-hmm. You know, but I'm such a weirdo when it comes to like, you know, it has to feel right. Like we have a brand, a whole a whole brand situation going on and all that stuff really matters to me, you know? Um, but I don't think I don't think you're wrong for feeling that way. And I just yeah. want to make sure you understand that like, yeah, yeah. that is super normal. Yeah. Um, but you would be wrong if you didn't take what we get, what we're giving you. Mm-hmm. And like, because not, not to say you do this, yeah. but just because you don't like the package it's coming from, mm-hmm. like it's still valuable information. Exactly. You know I mean? And that's the mistake that most people make. Yeah. Cause they don't like the messenger or the package. It's like, hold on, but can this benefit you? 
And so yeah. I think for me, I mean, that's that's what I've been able to do in this space, but not just as a content creator, but also as a father, mm-hmm. also as a husband, because sometimes, I mean, you all are hitting on, on things that just rattle you because it challenges the paradigm, even when you're wrong, when you when you know you're wrong, and then to have a peer reflect that yeah. in a healthy way with healthy communication. And also saying... I totally understand how you feel that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at, and at the end of the day, um, I mean, it's one of those vague questions that you yeah. ask in a podcast like this, man. It's like, what's next? But yeah, but but literally, as I mean, you all have you moved. Where were you all before San Diego? But yeah, we we were in San Diego. And we just moved into a house in the same area. Yeah, yeah. I saw that, but I didn't realize you were from Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, born and yeah. raised. Yeah. So you got your family. You know, you're living on the other side of the country, at least from where you grew up, where you were raised. Um, you, your children are growing and, you know, we can easily look up and it'll be five, ten years down the road. So in this content creation space, like, what's the hope uh, or the, how do you see yourself evolving? You don't have to give me the details. No, I'm, you know, I don't care about that. Um, here, I'll show you. Yeah. See, I knew you had a plan. So, um, so this doesn't have my vision statement, but this is basically like new logo hmm. and everything. <laughs> um, so... Basically, what we are going to step into is we're going to be we're going to be the leader of equipping fathers. Yeah. So I want fathers to walk into fatherhood, men to walk into fatherhood with the proper tools necessary to accomplish everything with confidence. Yeah. Um, and so right now, what we are working on behind the scenes, like super grassroots stuff, is creating a um, a course to help with that. Yeah. Um, like an online. Like like an online course, like a, a like a certified class to usher people into fatherhood. So I spent about $15,000 on building a re- rebranding belief in fatherhood. Uh, when is this, when is this uh, podcast dropping? Uh, what's this month? Where, where are we? We're in March, about to be. Man, when you want it to drop? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just making sure, yeah. So this will be out by the end of March. By the end of March? It'll be out. This is a podcast. I'll drop this by the end of March. Right, I, cool. I have a server in the queue right now. Okay, cool. So. Um, yeah, so the, the, the stuff that you're seeing currently on Belief of Fatherhood, this is the beginning of this. I've been working on this, uh, and I've hired a company to work on this for about, you know, in, in October we started. And, um, you know, we believe that, you know, um, because of the failures of our parents, the failures of us, um, the lack of, you know, vulnerability, mm-hmm. um, you know, fatherhood is, is a very despairing thing. You know, and so how do we equip fathers? What, what tools do they have? What do they need mm-hmm. to step into fatherhood? You know, mentally, you yeah. know, uh, physically, emotionally, you know, what type of conversations are they going to have their own parents? You know, um, we're tackling that right now as, as we're developing the modules for the e-course. Um, so that's what that's where I see myself making the bulk of, you know, um, the, the difference mm-hmm. and also the bulk of our income mm-hmm. coming from that. Uh, and currently, what we're doing, we're working on working with a few brands this year. Um, you know, I went from working with like thirty brands to working with like three. You know what I'm saying? So I'm working with intentional, like, intentionally. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, um, I don't want to just be out there working with everybody. Yeah. And there's certain, you know, certain companies will, you know, give you more for more attention and yeah. stuff like that. So we're working with three companies, and uh, you know, it's uh, Pampers, uh, one I can't talk about yet, and then Dove Men's Care. Yeah. Um, so with that, uh, with Dove Men's Care, they sponsored a movie that um, I was in. That's why I didn't come last year mm-hmm. because uh, we were shooting a movie. Wow. Um, a documentary called Dads. Yeah. It's, it's directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. She's Ron Howard's daughter. Ron awesome. Howard's in the movie. Yeah. Uh, Kenan, Kenan Thompson's in the movie. Um, um, I think Will Smith's in it too. So wow. it should be pretty dope. It should be coming around, out around Father's Day. Um, yeah, and so that's kind of what, what we have coming up. Uh, that's a lot of hard work right now and, and also like elevating the, the content so that if we wanted to, we could submit anything to a film festival and yeah. it would get real attention. Man, um, one of the film festivals, I don't know if it was L.A. or Atlanta, man, they actually created a special category for, for dad documentaries like oh, a man. year ago. Oh, man. Yeah. So, you know, I'm sitting over here inspired, right? Awesome. It's, it's, it's kind of hard not to be. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think, uh, man, I think that's your secret sauce, too, because sometimes there's, man, there's more power and visibility. A lot of times we think that we get our power from the private thing, the privacy, keeping it secret. Yeah. You know, but 
I, I see that power source uh, in – Yo, you can move. There's a season where we're supposed, where we should be moving in silence. Yeah. But then there's a season where you got to let the work do the work, and you put it out into the atmosphere, and let people start to grab hold to it. Um, what's evident to me as I'm sitting with you, and I mean it's been evident, but it's even clearer now that you know in every movement in every sector there are uh, there there are visionaries, there's leaders that actually push the agenda so much further than it could have gone had you know everybody had every I'm trying to give a cool analysis but I'm butchering this but mm-hmm. you know had we all been on the same page but I think it's some people it's the forerunners I'm thinking about King like there were so many people working in this civil rights movement yeah, I can do that yeah man we and we know several of them John Lewis and yeah. uh, you know whether it's Rosa Parks or whomever I'm from Nashville so I'm thinking about a lot of folks in Nashville that were a part of the civil rights movement but then you have those those pillars uh, that really, man, heighten the profile mm. of the civil rights movement. And one thing that I know for sure is that visibility creates opportunity. And so I think one of the reasons that it's, for me, this is all about championing you. And one of the reasons that it's easier to champion you because you have high visibility within the fatherhood movement, within the fatherhood community, yeah. and your visibility will create has the ability to create opportunities for so many more of us man yeah definitely does that does that make sense yeah yeah and but also i do feel i do feel a little bit of like resistance you know what i'm saying from some of you know my peers Mm -hmm. you know what i mean which i understand you know Mm -hmm. since we're all doing our own thing but i just want people to know like man i'm not the guy to envy i'm not the guy to like because i don't like i'm not doing it on purpose have they talked to you have they sat down no, I don't think so. You yeah, just kind of yeah, see it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I could feel tell. Energy, yeah, yeah. I, could, I could tell. But, um, you know, like, and in, in the, in the crazy thing is that, like, I'm not an ambitious person. Mm-hmm. And, and people were really shocked when I mm-hmm. say that. But, like, naturally, I'm a very lazy, mm-hmm. like, just, I like <laughs> to sit and watch The Office and eat burritos. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't like to do anything. Yeah. Um, it's because of my relationship with God mm-hmm. that, I I know that I'm supposed to do this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's it's evident. only that, right? That's evident. So it's like, I don't necessarily, I didn't necessarily want to fly here. Yeah. Like, it was very inconvenient. Yeah, because right? I saw you were in L.A. Yeah. yesterday. I was on your Instagram. I was like, oh, he had the YouTube situation yeah. in L.A. And I walked down for breakfast, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, my well, God. Well, I had to fly, you know, I flew myself here. Yeah. You know, I hopped on a panel or whatever. But it's like, I understand that, like, it's not about me. Yeah. Like, this is not, that has nothing to do with me. Like, yeah. this has so much to do with, like, fathers understanding how valuable they are. Yeah. And knowing that they can, you know, just be around and that be enough. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that is important because um, as we make ourselves present to the father, he pursues us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and when you make yourself present with your kids, like, that gives when your kids make themselves present to you or vice versa, they can pursue you and you can pursue them. It's, yeah. it's a very interesting relationship. Um, and so the heart of a father isn't just for the dad. Some kids have the heart of a father and they want to shepherd and help and mm-hmm. protect. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, like, if you have that heart, you got to understand how valuable that is, man. And so I'm not really here for, like, the show. Like, bro, this ain't no, this no Hollywood nothing yeah. over here. Like, yeah. you can hit me up. We can do this again, yeah. you know, if the sound was bad or yeah, anything yeah. like that. But well, it, here's the deal with this podcast, mm-hmm. bro. How I record it, it's how I go out. It's how they get it. <laughs> it's how they get it, and that's the luxury. That's the standard I've set for myself, man. Because yeah. I want to. It's realness. I mean, I sit in my car listening to podcasts all the time. The more authentic they are, I'm like, yo, yo, that was yeah. kind of dope. That was kind of cool. Yeah. So I think my audience appreciates that as well. So it's not a big deal. Um, I think for me, content is king, and forget the noise i'm like did we have a meaningful conversation yeah yeah yeah. and because that's going to resonate with the folks listening to this this is this type of conversation is why you get the message like bro this really moved me i'm like i'm not even a dad yet but y'all got me looking forward to being a dad yeah i'm glad you just looked at your watch because you just reminded me you got a flight to catch i got a flight to catch yeah uh teresa and journey they upstairs like where he at yeah i told her i was about to uh, have you on the podcast go ahead Okay, cool. You could. I got the green light. Right, cool. But man, yeah, let's let's land the plane. Um, I, I appreciate this, uh, bro. I appreciate you. Uh, as I like to say, showing up as your true, authentic self. Yeah. For me, that's evident. Like I watch you. 
I watch how you show up. And it's, if you know what you're looking at, you can start to see through things. And, uh, and uh, I think the character of a man can always be measured, particularly if he's married, through how through his wife, yeah. is she still smiling, and through his kids. Yeah. And uh, flawed and all, I think, uh, man, you do. I'm just assuming you're flawed. You're flawed. Oh, hell Okay. <laughs> it's all flaws, <laughs> man. Fla- flawed and all, man. Yeah, man. You, you're doing a lot of it. A lot of the things, a lot of things right, man, and inspiring dads like me, not just in this creative world, but also in real life. Yeah. In real life. Hey, Amen, so. man. I appreciate you, bro. Thank yeah. you so much for doing what you yeah. do. Thank you for having me on. Have, have me again as many times as, as necessary. Um, I don't really connect with a lot of dudes like that. Yeah. Like, I do, but, like, you interview well. Yeah. I you know what I'm saying? That. So like, man, and I stumble through everything. Nah. But for me, it's about remaining, remaining present in these yeah, moments. Yeah, yeah, no, you interview very well. I appreciate you know what I'm saying. That. So, yeah, man, I'm here for you, bro, and yeah. for you guys too. If you need anything, let me yeah. know. Okay, uh, before I shake it up with you, just tell them where they can find you, man. Yeah, uh, best place to follow me is on uh, Belief Mel on G, uh, on Instagram. Yeah. B e l e a f m e l and uh, Belief in Fatherhood on YouTube. Belief in Fatherhood on YouTube. Uh, is where I tell all the, the cinematic stories and stuff like that. But Instagram is where you want to get at me. Can I brag on you, though, man? Sure. With that 200,000 followers oh, on man, YouTube. Oh, man, we just hit 200,000, man. 200,000 subs. Bruh. I got a freestyle coming out called 200K Freestyle. I saw you. I, I saw some in the comment or the caption. You was like, I think I should should I write a freestyle about yeah, it Yeah, because I did it at 100K. Yeah. So I think I'm going to do it every 100,000 yeah, followers. I was, I was waiting on that. Yeah. Yeah, and, man, the graphic... I'm not going to ask you who's doing your graphics. No, no, RJ. RJ. RJV underscore collectives. He's there amazing. you go. There you go, yeah. man. Yeah, the, the graphics is crazy. Bro, you said one dope thing on the panel. I know I'm jumping back into this. No, that's all good. You be putting us on, man, for the free. <laughs> you put us on, like, the, the fact, you know, you were talking about your agent and things. Mm-hmm. I said, that, you didn't even have to do that. Yeah. It's, okay. Yeah. Clearly. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the guest that I actually have the follow up conversation with. Okay. Maybe it's gonna be you. All right. Maybe it's gonna cool. be you. All right. So you've been listening to Fatherhood Is Dope, the podcast. I'm your guy, Aaron McGee. Man, you know where you can find me. You can find us on YouTube, backslash Fatherhood Is Dope. Uh, follow us on Apple, Stitcher, Google. That's where the podcast is, man. I appreciate you all joining. Don't forget to download, like, and subscribe to the podcast. Man, this conversation has been so real, so encouraging. I can't leave without actually shaking up with you. Yeah, bro. Uh, Fatherhood is dope to podcast. Peace. Peace.